Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA Stingray 120 kit build and continuing on with the construction of the wing. So the wing is pretty far along, but I still have several steps to go to complete it. And in this video, I'd like to hopefully get to several of those, which include attaching the leading edge. This, this rectangular piece gets attached to the leading edge and then it gets shaped for the leading edge for the airfoil. And then from there, you need to trim off all this material that's overhanging this last rib here on the tip. All this material gets trimmed off so it's flush. And then after that, you're gonna add a bunch of rib cap strips that are gonna go on each rib. There's a, there's a wider one for the outer rib and then there's narrow ones for the inner ribs. And these are here because if you can see this, the leading edge sheeting and the trailing edge sheeting is actually higher than the rib itself. And if you didn't put these cap strips on here, you'd have sort of a sunken kind of surface when you applied the, the covering material. So we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and put the cap strips on. And then we're gonna be applying some sheeting to the center section of the wing. And at this time, we're just gonna be sheeting the lower portion, not the upper portion. The top's gonna to be left open. Um, I don't know why. At this point, we come back to it later, so I'll have to check that out. But in any case, we're just gonna do the lower portion this, at this time. And then, if I can get to it, we have these sort of, these wing tips, or these wing plates, wing tip plates that go on the tip of the wings out here. And at this time, all we do is, there's actually gonna be two, two pieces for each wing. This is kind of, it's taped on here. And these get sandwiched together and glued, and then they get shaped. And then at the very end, they'll be attached, probably during the covering process. All right, so the instructions say to use a thick CA glue on here, and that's fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and use my type bond wood glue again. I just like having the time so I can kind of get this adjusted when I'm using, when I'm doing kind of bigger parts like this. I like to give myself a little bit more time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my, my wood glue. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that, of course, there, we, we drilled the holes for the dowels um, a few steps back. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cover those with our wood strip here. And then we drill out from the, from the back, from the inside, we drill out to, to reestablish the holes on the leading edge here. And I'm gonna have to kind of figure that out because that's what they tell you to do in the instructions, but I don't know if I have a drill bit that's gonna be that long. So we'll see how that goes. I may have to kind of maybe try to poke something through like a, like an owl or something like that, but we'll see how it goes. And then really quick, uh, the other thing is that, of course there's a little bit of a dihedral in the wing. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of sanding on, on these to get them to kind of match up, but it's very minor and it'll be okay, be easy enough to do. So let me go ahead and attach these and I'm gonna hold them down with just masking tape, and then we'll let it set overnight and we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. It's very soft. This is a very soft piece of balsa. And, I, and I, like I mentioned, I don't have to take too much off of this. It's a very low angle. So that'll go like this.
Okay, so as you see, I got this all now taped up and I, for good measure, I put some pins in here. And I did want to kind of mention, you know, the reason why they give you such a wide piece of this kind of leading edge stock material is because they say that just in case these are warped, have a little bend in them, they made them actually a little bit bigger so that if it does have sort of like a little, kind of like a little bow in it, you would just place this down and then you just kind of sand that out of, out of the leading edge. So I guess that was sort of a way to kind of help, help sort of, um, you know, if they had a piece of wood that wasn't, wasn't perfect, by making it a little bit bigger, it gives you a little bit more leeway to work with it. But anyhow, these came out actually pretty good. I don't think there's really any warping in these at all. And so now they're attached and we'll let this sit overnight and come back and take the tape off and then we'll move on to our next few steps. Okay, well, I'll let this cure overnight, and then as you saw, I just took all my masking tape off, and now I'm ready to start shaping this leading edge. So let me kind of show you my general approach in doing that. I'm gonna do this in basically two steps. The first step is I'm gonna go ahead and trim the outer part of this leading edge material to sort of match, if you will, a tangent to the curve of the airfoil. So if I, at this point, so if I kind of draw it, I'll try to draw it on here. So here's my curve. And there's about my tangent, so something like that at that point. And I'll try to sketch a little line in here like this. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. This isn't going to be perfect. I'm just trying to show you sort of the general idea. It's going to be something like this in here. Like that. Again, this is like this. So I'm going to try to go ahead and just kind of cut this off just straight along the leading edge. And then once I get this sort of center section kind of done, end up with this little sort of triangular looking piece, then I'm just gonna go ahead and round that off, sort of like this. Try to draw it here, kinda, kinda rough, but, so I'll just try to draw that off. So hopefully what happens is I get rid of, obviously I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff here. This is all gonna be gone. And I'll just end up with my little leading edge, rounded part of my leading edge. I think you get the picture. Okay, so there's relatively a lot of material that has to be removed from here. So for the rough cutting, I'm just going to use my X-Acto blade to kind of get it close. And then I'm going to use my razor planes to sort of get that matching sort of angle on it, like I just mentioned, the one that we're going to trim off here. And then once I get that down, then I'll just probably use a combination of the razor planes and then also my sanding, my sanding pads and such to kind of get that curve. And again, I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to work all the way across it, all the way back and forth, all at once, and take a little at a time and just kind of bring it down slowly. And I'm also going to be looking down the center line to make sure things are sort of even on both sides. And it's just going to be the process. So it takes some time to do it, but you got to be, if you take your time and take a little bit at a time, you should end up with a nice looking airfoil. Okay, so there it is. I have my kind of those angled cuts now established and looking down the leading edge, work both sides using the razor plane and then again my X-Acto blade in the beginning. And now the next step will be of course to kind of round this off now. But I think it came out okay. And one area that's a little more tricky, you can't really get it with the razor plane is right here at the center line because it kind of comes together at that angle. So I have to kind of trim that with just the blade. But in any case, looking pretty good. And I'll move on to rounding off this leading edge.
All right, so I'm gonna use my finer razor plane to just to sort of knock off this outer corner. And work it on both sides. A little bit at a time. I'm just gonna round it over and then I'll hit it with sandpaper. Okay, so here's where we are. So I got this leading edge now is now roughed in pretty pretty good. I'm using my finer planer to kind of get that, get this these edges knocked off like I just mentioned. And I worked all the way along the entire wing. And now I'm gonna just gonna finish it off with the sandpaper. Now I wanna be really careful and just take my time with the sandpaper and get it all smoothed out and hopefully it'll come out okay. Okay, well I got this sanded down I think pretty close and what I'll do is I'll take it outside in the sunlight and I'll inspect it really closely and just to make sure I don't see any major imperfections and I'll work on it a little bit longer. All right, so I used some tracing paper to trace the leading edge and I cut out a little template using some thicker material. This isn't really cardstock, but it's just a thicker paper and I'm just using this as a template to sort of give me a clue to see if I got this thing close or not. And you can kind of see there that it worked out pretty good. It's not perfect, perfect, but it's good enough for me. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. So now I'm gonna move on to the wing tips and I'm gonna trim off all of this excess material that's extending past our last rib here. Um, this source, the, the spars are a harder wood and I'm just gonna use a little saw to saw through that. And then I'll use the saw also for some of the, for the balsa and then to clean it up with maybe an X-Acto blade, and of course I'll sand it down to make it flush. All right, so this side is pretty much finished. And just a couple things to point out. Again, working with the hardwood up against the softwood is always a little bit challenging. I was trying to get my the as close as possible when I was cutting this so that I can kind of minimize how, how much sanding I have to do. Because like I mentioned before, when you have a hardwood up against the softwood, it's difficult to sand the hardwood down without really hitting the softwood too much. I could have used the masking tape method also, like I mentioned before. And I did have a couple little dings here, but that's okay, no big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll flip this over and I'll do the other wing tip. And then after that, we'll move on to capping the, the ribs. Okay, so the wing tips are now finished and I wanna move on to the rib caps. But before I do that, I need to clean up this mess. Boy, that was easy. So the rib caps consist of two types of material. There's a, there's a thinner one and a wider one, and they're the same thickness. The wider one goes on the outer, kind of on the tips out here. And the way you apply this is gonna, gonna cut it to fit. And then it extends a little bit beyond, per the instructions, you extend it a little bit beyond the rib 
and then you come back and you trim it and you sand it to be flush. Now for the inner ribs, you use the smaller one and it just goes right along the center of the rib like so. So what I'll do is I'm going to cut these as I go and cut them and fit them as I go and I'm going to glue them on. I think I'm just going to use a thick CA. A good way to do this is to go ahead and kind of get set it up on one side and then just bend this down to match down here and then hold it down and then I'm just going to mark it. I'm going to mark it a little bit longer than what I think it needs to be and then I can trim it back to fit. I'd rather cut a little bit longer than trim off and obviously to cut it too short. Okay, here's my mark. I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it. I'm going to use my little grid I have here on my table. These cutting pads are, pads are very useful. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of eyeball it. Yep, it's got to trim a little more off of there. Okay, good. Just like so. Okay, so there you go. I'm gonna have to hold this down with my thumb a little bit. So I thought I would try one more little method. I'm gonna try to just kind of sort of gently kind of put a little bit of a gentle bend in the front part of this. This is pretty stiff stuff, but I think if I can get a little bit of a bend in there, that'll help, help it sit down. Maybe it'll help kind of hold it down. Okay, that seemed to work a little bit. Oops, get in there, buddy. All right, so as you saw, I was working with this and I did find that kind of bending the end of it a little bit really sort of compensates, you know, this thing's coming up and it just, this stuff is pretty stiff and it's hard to get that last little bit of curve in there. And by praying, putting a little bit of bend in it, that seemed to be really helpful.
All right, all of the rib cap strips are now glued on. I am letting a few of them, I'm left some, some of the tape on a few of them as they cure up a little bit longer just to make sure that they stick well. But I think everything's gonna be okay. Like I said, it took a little bit longer than I expected. I had to, you know, had to fit them all. I had to bend them over these um, along the, the rib profile. And then I had to attach them in a few places with tape to get them to kind of stay down. So that's that. And then as I just saw, I trimmed the wing tips the excess material off the wingtip and then sanded, it, sanded that down smooth. I did that on both sides and it came out pretty clean. All right, so the next step is gonna be to center, to, to sheet the center section, the bottom of the center section, not the top. For some reason we hold off on the top um, for a later step. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the wing over and we'll, we'll sheet the center section. And according to the instructions, the the sheets hang over one quarter inch on either side of the ribs here. So that means I'm gonna to have to trim off some of this just to kind of make that measurement. I have one more step I want to complete on the wing before I move on to other things, and that is going to be to sandwich these wing end plate 
pieces together. So these go on the tip of the wing and sandwich them together. I'm just going to be using my tight bond wood glue. I'm going to smear it on here. Then I'm going to kind of line them up and pin them down and let them cure. And then what happens is they do get shaped. They're going to get rounded off and then they get covered, you know, with your covering material and attached to the wing tips. Sort of like probably one of the last steps of the build. I don't want to put too much glue on here with the wood glue. I want to just smear it across in a thin layer. I don't want to have a bunch of it squirting out on the sides. And I don't want to saturate the wood with the glue either. So I'm just going to try to put a smaller amount on. Start with this and I'll see if I can get coverage. And I'll wipe off excess if I need to. Okay, so the wingtip end plates are now sandwiched together. I have a little bit of sanding to do, that, do on them, but they're pretty much finished. And again, you know, we'll, we'll come back later in the build and attach these toward the end of the build. So, but one thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, I was using this Type Mon, this, this PVA glue, which is water-based. And when I had all that glue on there, I noticed that it actually started, these started to sort of like warp a little bit. And... You know, that's sort of a problem you can run into sometimes with PVA glues is because they're water-based. They can, in some instances, sort of, sort of warp your, your balsas. So you have to be very careful with it. So what I had to do is I took everything off my, my, um, my building board, and then I just put some heavy weights on these. I stacked them on top of each other, and then I put some heavier weights on them and let, them, let it cure up like that. They're nice and flat now, but well, I got a little bit worried there. So in any case, you may want to consider, you may be, I'm going to say, you know, probably don't do that. Try using maybe a thick CA instead of what I did. So it's something to think about. All right, so for right now, I'm finished with the wing. Obviously, I do have some additional steps to do later in the build, like sheet the center section. I also have to construct the servo mounting bays and things like that. But for right now, we're going to move on. And my next video, the next step in the build, is going to be to work on the tail section pieces. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching my channel. I always appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.